Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and this is the first time dropping into the channel. Welcome. It's Saturday, April 15th. I'm in uh, San Mateo, California tonight. And uh, first, I want to start off by saying uh, thank you, Agena Astro. I ordered this like just three days ago, maybe four days ago. This is my new ZWO ASI 533MM Pro. Uh, as you know, if you saw the last video, uh, I've decided to go uh, straight mono and I'm going to be selling my ASI 533MC Pro and I want to clear up any confusion. I was not saying anything uh, negative about the 533 camera. It comes in both the one-shot color and uh, the monochrome. Uh, what I was trying to get across is that I've decided just to go with uh, straight monochrome. I have the ASI 294MM Pro, which is a monochrome camera, and so I'm just going to go straight filters and monochrome cameras. And uh, you know, the 533 is a is a is a great platform in my mind. You don't have to take dark files. Uh, it's very efficient, and I don't have to take dark flats as I would have to with my ASI 294MM. So all I was uh, really just saying is I, I want to go monochrome and uh, I just feel more comfortable there. And so I also got the uh, set of ZWO uh, LRGB filters. So this really got me thinking uh, on my spreadsheet here um, as I'm defining what I'm going to shoot for each target, either RGB or um, a narrow band, uh, I notice I don't have an L there. And so... I know there's many people that when they shoot RGB, they also shoot uh, a luminous uh, filter as well. And uh, that got me thinking, and I think there is no right way or wrong way, whether you, know, you go LRGB or whether you go RGB, uh, I think maybe it's personal preference, but I'm just kind of curious. Uh, what are my viewers' thoughts on uh, what you do, whether it's LRGB or just RGB? My thoughts are um, LRGB, I mean, we often hear that Luminous provides the detail and the RGB provides the color. But I think, in my experience, you can also get detail out of the color without the Luminous. But in my experience, you just have to shoot longer. And so, uh, again, I'm just wondering uh, what your approach might be and if you'd share the, what your thoughts on it are on it, what the pros and cons are, you know, what is your ratio? Or if you do sh shoot LRGB, are you doing 50% uh, luminous and then spreading the other 50% across the RGB filters? So just what is your methodology? And I understand some people create a synthetic luminous. Uh, is that maybe your approach? So I think uh, for me going forward, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to keep the L out of it for a bit, I think. But I'm also finding that week, day to day, week to week, I kind of change my view on things as I'm trying to move forward in my journey and learn uh, as I come across new information. So um, I'm just very curious uh, what everybody else might be doing uh, when it comes to LRGB versus RGB. So uh, just wanted to put that out there, hopefully get some feedback, and I look forward to hearing uh, what your thoughts are. And um, I, the weather looks good for next week to take this camera along with the Edge HD8. And... Um, down to uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in Landers, California. Right now, Wednesday and Thursday night, look like it's going to be clear to me. If I can get two nights in, that's worth it uh, to travel that distance. Um, I'm looking forward to when the snow melts up in the Blue Canyon Airport in Nyack, uh, California. That's a much shorter trip for me but with the amount of record snowfall in the Sierras, it could be quite some time uh, before that snow melts at the uh, airport there. So uh, I'm going to be going down to uh, doing a trip down to uh, Landers. I may do an extended trip 
and stay a little bit into next week, even though the moon is will continue to increase in illumination. But uh, if there are some clear skies, I will uh, I will consider doing some uh, RGB, even though there might be some uh, moonlight present. So. Um, other than that, what I wanted to uh, mention was, I uh, let's see here if I can do this correctly. All right, what you should be seeing here now, just give me a second. Uh, we'll bring this up. Um, here is an image that I took the other night. Uh, in my last video, I said I was setting up. I wanted to make sure everything was uh, identified that I need to have in order to make the Edge HD8 uh, operational. Uh, shooting the other night gave me a chance to make sure I had all the right cables. Um, I also uh, fired up the uh, ASI Air Plus for the first time in several months. There was an update, so I got both of my ASI Air Pluses uh, updated, those type of things. So uh, while the results of the image, now this is only 2.9 hours of uh, data on RGB data under uh, Bortle 9 skies. The uh, sky quality meter reading was 17.54. So it was very, uh, very, very bad skies that night. But anyway, it gave me a chance to uh, get my hands back into Fix Insight and get familiar with it again. And uh, so I like this image. Again, it's nothing to look at, but I'm going to shoot this image down in GMARS under the Board of Four Skies. Uh, I'll shoot it for at least six, seven hours uh, on one night, uh, weather permitting, and uh, maybe I'll go a second night on it. Again, trying to increase the number of uh, uh, subs that I take, and uh, but I'll make that decision uh, down there. But... Um, uh, other than that, I think that uh, I did see an interesting video that I recommend. You might want to take a look at if you're a Pix Insight user, although I think his tools may work with other apps as well. I'm not sure on that. Um, but Adam Block did an interview with Russ, the creator of Blur Exterminator. I think uh, Russ also wrote, uh, noise exterminator and star exterminator so I'm going to take a look at those products I'll trial them once I collect some data from GMARS where I have some good quality uh, data then I'll do a, tw a tr trial uh, on those tools and see uh, in particular for uh, blur exterminator which is focused on using AI for deconvolution uh, that demonstration in Adam Block's uh, video is really uh, interesting, and so uh, it, it is a video you might wanna might wanna check out. So uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And for some reason now, uh, I really had a hard time sitting down and digging into Pix Insight kind of uh, last year, uh, but now I'm all gung ho again, and uh, I really want to make sure that I'm uh, learning the best uh, workflow and understand the tools that are available to uh, make the images better. So I think that's about it. I don't have much more. Um, again, I'm going to sell my 533 uh, MC Pro. If anyone has an interest, let me know. I'm going to put it up on uh, Cloudy Nights. I'm also going to uh, sell my Pole Master, QHY Pole Master. I don't use that anymore. It's in good condition. And uh, since I'm sell selling the 533 MC Pro, I'll also then uh, sell my Optolon L Extreme uh, filter. And I'll list all those on cloudy nights unless someone reaches out to me in the comments saying they'd like to uh, chat about uh, the cost and those type of things. Uh, feel free to hit me up. All right, I uh, just want to do a quick one uh, here tonight. Um, Another uh, 533 camera, this time just monochrome. I'm looking forward to using it and uh, looking forward to imaging again. It's been a, a, a dry couple of months as far as opportunities to image, but uh, hopefully things are going to start to uh, improve here in my part of the world. Okay, um, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe.
I hope wherever you may be in the world, things, uh, the sky is clear, that you're experiencing some good weather. And at any time, feel free to drop a comment on what you might be working on. Uh, keep in mind, there's Astro Vagabond and Friends on Facebook. It's a private group. If you'd like to join, uh, just reach out and we'll let you in. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for dropping into the channel. I appreciate your continued support. See you next time.